scale, but it all has consequences. And and I think we're we're about well, we are starting to see the consequences of people who could borrow at two and a half percent and find out it doesn't work at current rates, and they hand it back to somebody. In a recent warning from legendary billionaire investor Warren Buffett, the U.S. real estate market is facing a looming storm of epic proportions, with a staggering $1.4 trillion in debt fueling this impending catastrophe. The real estate market has already started to feel the tremors of what's to come. But according to Buffett, this is just the tip of the iceberg. The real impact is set to hit in just a few months and the consequences could be dire. As interest rates have remained at historic lows for past 15 years, it has led to an explosion in the use of debt for real estate purchases, driving property values to dizzying heights. In this video, we will delve into the warning from Warren Buffett, the potential losses in the commercial real estate sector, and the sectors and geographies that could be most affected, and whether Berkshire Hathaway will get more involved in commercial real estate. So let's dive in. You see, Warren Buffett has been raising the red flag about a brewing storm in the US commercial property market. American banks are loaded up with what he calls bad loans as property prices are starting to tumble. That's a big deal because it's not just a market dip, it's a crisis alert. Commercial real estate covers everything from office buildings and apartment complexes to warehouses, and it plays a massive role in our economy. It's crucial to understand how low interest rates have played a significant role in the real estate market. You see, low interest rates have been like rocket fuel for real estate values. Warren Buffett, the oracle of Omaha himself, has pointed out that interest rates have been dancing around the 0% mark for quite some time. Now that might not sound like a big deal, but trust me, it's a game changer. When interest rates are that low, it's like a siren call to investors. They can borrow money at a ridiculously low cost, and that, my friends, drives real estate prices through the roof. It's like having an irresistible sale on homes and commercial properties, and everyone wants a piece of the action. But here's the thing, when too many people start snapping up properties, it can create a bit of a frenzy, and prices can get inflated. Let's break it down a bit. When someone wants to buy a property, like a house or an office building, they usually don't have a pile of cash lying around, right? So they go to a bank to get a loan to cover most of the purchase price. This is where debt comes into play. Imagine you're buying a $1 million office building and you've got $350,000 saved up as your equity. Kind of like a down payment on the house. The rest 650 grand you borrow from the bank. It's like a mortgage for businesses. Your profitability in this scenario is heavily tied to the interest rate on the loan. The lower the interest rate, the more profitable the purchase, making low interest rates a game changer for property investors. But here's where things get interesting. The profitability of your property also depends on something called the debt service coverage ratio, or DSCR for short. It's like a safety net for property owners. DSCR is calculated by taking the property's income like rent and dividing it by the annual debt payment. So if the income is more than the debt payment, you're in the clear. Banks like to see a DSCR of over 1.2 times, especially at a 5% interest rate. That's a sign that the property can handle its debt payment, even if things go south. But when interest rates rise, the DSCR can quickly get out of whack, putting property owners in a tight spot. It's a situation where higher rates can quickly turn a once profitable investment into a money pit. So here's a practical example to illustrate the point. Imagine someone snagged a lovely office building for a cool million bucks with a 5% interest rate on their loan. Sounds reasonable, right? But as interest rates climb, let's say it goes up to 7%, suddenly their annual debt payment jumps significantly. But that's not all, folks. In the age of remote work, the demand for office spaces has taken a nosedive, and it might not bounce back. The income generated by the property drops and you're left with an investment that might not pay the bills. Now speaking of remote work, it's worth noting that the rise of telecommuting has significantly reduced the demand for office spaces. And this shift might be here to stay. The days of packed office buildings might be dwindling and that's not great news for property owners who heavily rely on commercial real estate income. 
With many companies embracing remote work, they're downsizing or letting go of their office spaces. And that could lead to a surplus of empty properties. So while some may say, hey, we'll get through it, it's not as simple as that. The landscape of the business world is changing, and these consequences could be long-lasting. Let's take a look at some real-life examples of commercial property defaults, the kind of stuff that Warren Buffett is cautioning us about. One recent example that's been making headlines is Starwood. They are one of the big players in the world of real estate, and they defaulted on a whopping $212 million loan for an office building in Atlanta. Now, this property was once a real gym, with 90% occupancy back in 2018. But fast forward to today, and it's down to just 60% occupancy. Why? Well, partly because the rise of remote work has shrunk the demand for office space. But what happens when owners walk away like this? It's surely a blow to them, but the banks are the ones left holding the bag. They end up with a property that's often worth way less than the loan they handed out. And this isn't a one-off story. We're on the cusp of seeing a lot more of these defaults. There's an estimated $1.4 trillion worth of these loans that are coming due over the next year or two. Many of these properties either aren't worth as much as they were when they were purchased, or they can't handle the higher debt payments from rising interest rates. The impacts of these defaults won't just be a blip on the radar. It's expected to have a long-lasting ripple effect in the real estate market. And the storm isn't just going to affect the big Wall Street banks. It's the smaller regional and community banks that have been dishing out the majority of these commercial real estate loans. They're going to be the ones left picking up the pieces. And why does that matter? Well, these smaller banks aren't just involved in real estate. They're the ones providing crucial funding to small and medium-sized businesses that drive our economy in many cities and towns. Non-recourse debt is a term that might sound a bit complex, but it's a crucial concept in the world of commercial real estate, and it's something Warren Buffett has been warning us about. So what's the deal with non-recourse debt? Well, it's essentially a type of loan that gives property owners a unique safety net. When you have a non-recourse loan, you're not personally on the hook if things go south. In residential real estate, it's common for people to have personal guarantees, meaning you're responsible for paying back the loan even if the value of your property plummets. But in commercial real estate, non-recourse loans let you off the hook. If the property's value tanks, you can hand the keys back to the bank and walk away without personal financial consequences. Now let's talk about the pros and cons of non-recourse debt. On the upside, it's like a financial shield for property owners. Let's say you bought a property for $50 million, chipped in $10 million of your own cash, and financed the rest with a $40 million non-recourse loan. If the property's value takes a nosedive to $30 million, you can just give the keys back to the bank and say, it's your problem now. But here's the catch. The bank is left with a property worth way less than the loan amount. This isn't just theoretical, there's about $1.4 trillion worth of these loans coming due soon. If many of these properties end up being worth less than their loans, it's going to be a real headache for the banks, especially the smaller ones. And this is where it gets even more interesting. Picture a scenario where properties were purchased when interest rates were low and the real estate market was booming. But then, interest rates skyrocket and property values drop. Thanks to non-recourse debt, property owners can just hand the keys back to the bank and move on. But the catch is that this isn't an isolated case. Many properties are in the same sinking boat. They bought when the market was hot, and now they're drowning, especially if the income the property generates declines. So banks are stuck with a pile of properties they have to offload, likely at much lower prices than what the previous owners paid. If you enjoyed this video guys, make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video and watch this one as well.